This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Blade's coming back, everybody. Welcome, <gasps> yeah. Welcome to Caravan of Garbage. Be scared if you're a vampire. That's right. Uh, if- but if you aren't a vampire, maybe also be scared because there's a lot of stray bullets flying around. Sometimes he'll be holding you in a hospital and then cops just open fire. Yeah, and maybe he'll spin around <laughs> and like cop the bullets on his back. And, and protect you, but maybe he won't. Maybe he won't. You know, he's getting yeah. old, this guy. <laughs> he doesn't live as long as vampires, if you recall. He has all their strengths and none of their weaknesses, except for the weaknesses that he needs, like a lot of blood or a serum all the time to survive. <laughs> yep. And he ages rapidly. Seems that way. <laughs> yes. Anyway, Blade 1998. This movie, it kicked off a lot. It yeah. kind of doesn't get the credit it necessarily deserves because it's pre-X-Men, like pre-Spider-Man. It's pre-The Matrix. And there is some stuff from this that kind of like, well, that's very Matrix-esque, isn't it? Certainly. Trench coats. That's right. Yep. But, but it's also post-Crow. So, oh, of course. It's right in that sweet spot, isn't it? It really it was is. A, it was a post-Crow universe. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Yeah, yeah. But it was also an era where it was the same year as Batman and Robin, so everyone was like, "These are over. We're not doing oh, these." That's comic absolutely book true. Anymore, yeah, are we? yeah, yeah, yeah. And this sort of this sort of reinvigorated the genre. Mm. This was this was also in the in the era where Marvel comics, because it's a Marvel property. I think maybe yeah. not everybody knows that. But I mean, they'll they'll know it now. Sure, they'll bloody know it now because it seems. <laughs> well, they like, don't say Marvel at the start. No, it's a... the success of this is not the comic book element of it that's no, not sure. why it took no, off no it's the yeah. gore and the action yeah. and Wesley Snipes and just bah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah but so this was right when Marvel were in some serious financial trouble as they often were throughout yes. the 90s and if I remember correctly this is one of the properties that they sold for like a pittance yeah right I th- and I don't have the exact figure but I think it was like $75,000 like they, they sold the property to New Line Cinema who then made 100, $130 million yeah just for this one alone yes yeah the whole trilogy made something like four hundred million in total. That's something enough. Something like that. Yeah, which is plenty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, New Line apparently originally wanted to do it as an action comedy, but David S. Goyer, who's gone on to do Batman v Superman and things of varying quality, uh-huh. there's good and ill. <laughs> yeah, for uh-huh. sure. But he was like, no, let's do this like gritty and real. But this isn't actually the b- gritty and real. But this isn't actually. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I think this is dated, but it's the best kind of dated. Yeah, look. Uh, I mean, a blood rave. That's what vampires <laughs> would do in the 90s. In the 90s, they? exactly. That's right. That's in how the... you'd lure a, a 48-year-old human man. Yeah. <laughs> in a... the 90s, there would be an action subplot where Blade has to get back his tiny little sunglasses, <laughs> which are cool then. <laughs> These days, no, 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 no. 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 But back in the day... Oh, he made those cool. You know he did. Mm. So this particular version of Blade, the vampire elements of him and the fact that his mother was bitten by a vampire and then he's born and he's got half the powers and all that, mm. that's not the Blade from the comics, is it? A lot of that is invented for this. Is yeah, right? I mean, the original comic book Blade, A, British. Mm. I won't yes. hear of it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, secondly, his powers were much more limited in the comic books. He was more or less a regular human vampire hunter, except he couldn't be turned into a vampire. Yeah. That, that was that was his number one so say a man with a metal collar is the equivalent yeah pretty much yeah Yeah, exactly (laughs) a man who's good at dodging someone flinging their face and mouth at you (laughs) sure you know uh when this movie became popular when the blade trilogy became popular they did what often they do with the comic book characters they make it more like the movie version so in the comics he was then bitten i think by morbius the living vampire and he basically we'll get back to him mutated and and gained all the powers that he has in the movies it's actually a morbius cameo in an alternate ending but we'll come back to that don't even worry about it the blade that we kind of know in the comics now is this blade yes really i love the martial arts in this it's pretty decent for the time especially in a pre-matrix world post the crow obviously yep and they, they they recycled those same four like punch sound effects. Yeah, boy, do but they. But they did it. They did it. They gave it enough variation. You barely even notice. You don't even you notice. notice every time. You can't help but notice. You can't help but notice. It's uh, it's uh, inescapable. The effects are a mixed bag, but for the time, mostly pretty good. Like the ash effect when he kills a vampire and they go down to their skeleton. I think if it was faster it would look better because often you'll just see the CGI skeleton for a second (laughs) before it disappears. Mm -hmm. But everything about the character in terms of like the costume, I love the symmetry. Even the sword is like directly (laughs) in the middle of his back, Uh like the haircut and the tattoos, the jacket. I love his array of weapons. Some you only see like once, like the sword's great with the little trick blade in it. Mm -hmm. The The gun for shooting. The gun for shooting is good also, Mm -hmm. but he only uses this weapon once. The garrote is incredible. Oh yeah. He garrotes. 
Mr. Pigtails uh-huh. at the end and <laughs> takes his head off. Yeah, right. That's an incredible weapon. Uh, before Wesley Snipes, though, they actually considered Denzel Washington, LL Cool J, and Lawrence Fishburne. But Wesley Snipes became involved because he was going to do Black Panther for Marvel, and that was kind of was taking its time, and it wasn't really didn't look like it was going to happen. And then so huh. he ended up he ended up being Blade instead of Black Panther. Yeah, good move. There's an interview with him because I know we'll, we'll get to Blade Three another week, uh-huh. maybe even another year. But uh, <laughs> there's an interview where he's in the full Blade getup, glasses and all, and he's talking about the movie Blade, and he kind of slips in and out of. Him being Blade. And was and... that was that before he was cast as Blade? <laughs> no, <laughs> he just started doing interviews as Blade and hoping for the best. Because there is that story about Blade Three where he'd gone full meta character or whatever he mm-hmm. whatever was happening, and he, everyone on set had to refer to him as Blade. And yes. he was it was very much in the moment. Yeah. What do you think of Karen Jensen? Who's that? Ah, uh, the love interest. She's fine. Yeah, she's fine. There was a scene with her that, that was cut because it was too disturbing. She goes to Blade and Whistler's hideout, and she's like, uh-huh. sweet warehouse. And they're like, we know, it's the 90s, we know. We, we know, it's a, it's, a, it's a sweet warehouse that's very easily accessible by just, it's just next to a train station. <laughs> there are literally trains going past it. There's no doors, you can just walk in. Well, they do just walk in. He gets right up to Whistler, doesn't yeah. he? Mm. Right there, hits him right in the face, the villain. Mm. We'll get back to him. But she finds a vampire baby in this deleted scene that they're just testing all their different weapons and experiments on oh, to wow. see what kills. <laughs> Uh-huh. Vampires. And what would also k- probably kill regular babies. Yeah, as well. sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You think this silver bullet will kill <laughs> this vampire baby? Bang! <laughs> We'll give oh, that a go. Yeah. Uh, Donald Logue's in this, uh, Mr. Pigtails. Yes, as Quinn, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. His role was extended because he was very funny on set, and so he uh-huh. kind of he gets a, a fair bit to do before he's garroted to pieces <laughs> at the end. But I saw this bit of trivia, and I thought it was pretty amusing. So in the hospital scene, you know where Donald Logue is in the complete burn victim makeup, like yeah, head but, to toe. And then later he uh, he regenerates his entire body, including yes. his hair and his beard. That's right. <laughs> well, it's like the Wolverine, isn't it? Yeah, it is. He's yeah. growing his hair back instantly. Mm-hmm. But in that fight scene, he got his jaw massively dislocated. Oh, for real? For real. So they had to take him to a real hospital. <laughs> and the hospital were like, what happened to this man? Because <laughs> right. he's just covered still head uh-huh. to toe in the burns. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> in the prosthetic burns. But apparently it's this thing where he had this accident years prior, and if he gets hit in the jaw the wrong way, it'll just lock up open. Oh, right. Yes. So there you go. Also, why didn't Blade kill that guy? He just lights him on fire and just backs away. You know he's going to jump up in the morgue. No, I think... I think Was it he... the cops interrupting? No, I think he would have killed the cops as well. Okay. <laughs> no, I think... I, I, I got the impression, and I'm sure I didn't think about it at the time, but I got the impression when we just rewatched it that he wanted to send a message to uh, the, the bad guys. The, oh, okay. The, the, the leaders of the... The vampire factions. But really, he's making more vampires doing that, isn't he? He made it. He made two. I mean, one got unvampired. That's true. Yeah. She happened to be a unvampirologist. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That just happened to be a degree. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, it is. What do you think of Whistler? He dies briefly. He comes back. What do you think of that character, Chris Christopherson? He's yeah. like a movie star of the past. Uh-huh. Uh huh. By the time this rolls around, country but... singer as well. Yeah, right? sure. Why not? Uh-huh. Yeah. He's a Bradley Cooper esque man, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, Bradley Cooper does the country singer song where he's like, I'm in the roads, I'm a winding down, I kill myself at the end. Spoiler, I haven't, I haven't spoiler, seen right. whatever movie that is. <laughs> okay, I, haven't right. I haven't seen it. Uh, I love the bit though where Whistler's filling up the car uh-huh. and he's just splashing petrol all over the car <laughs> and, and then he a lights cigarette. a cigarette. Mm-hmm. That guy, if, if the vampires didn't get him, yeah. he was going to explode yeah. himself regardless. Well, he's got, that, he's got a big leg brace down one leg and yeah. I guess well, you know, we're, we're, we're to assume that he got that in battle with vampires, but he probably just got a corner revolving door or something. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. The an alternate ending in how for jumping ahead, but Blade goes to Russia at the end. Uh-huh, yep. That vampire that he sees was going to be Whistler. So that was one at one point. Oh, that was going to be see. that situation. So yeah, but they saved him for Blade Two, Blade On, bro. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. Okay, good, excellent. <laughs> okay, so the villain in this, Deacon Frost. Well, there's two villains. There's of course the great Udo Kier, who's been in one million films. Who's that? The the the, the East Euro- Eastern European. Guy, you know, like the the head of the, the oh, traditional vampires. I love the I love the board of weird Eastern European vampires. Me too. Yeah, I'm there for it mm. every goddamn day of the mm. week. But, but then I, we've got a fresh new face, yeah. Stephen Dorff as as Deacon Frost. I forgotten kind of his role in this. Like I knew he was in it, but he's really good in this movie. I agree. Yeah, yeah. he's a very sinister villain, and he kind of. He's mostly, not mostly disappeared, but, you know, he's popped up here and there. Most recently, he was in the new season of True Detective, where he was also really good. He was mm-hmm. in that Britney Spears film clip, if you remember. 
The one where she's on Mars? No, that's Life on Mars. It's David Bowie. Oh, I see, right. Uh -huh. But yeah, the Deacon Frost role was, they went to Jet Li and they ended up getting this guy, which I think works. The hair, the cigarette behind the ear. <laughs> yes. That's very 90s. Ah, oh, the leather blazers. <laughs> you know mm, it. So yeah. good. What do you think of familiars in this? I, I like that element of vampire lore and I like them bringing it to the modern era of 1998 where, you know, you got your cops and whoever. They can be anybody. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I like that. Me too. <laughs> that's all I have on that. He threw me a curveball. I hadn't even thought about it, but I like it. How's this though? Yes. This movie has some terrific lines. I wrote down my three standout ones. I have. I already know what number one is, but yes. give us the other two. Okay, so the number one is obviously some motherfuckers always try to ice skate on. Is that an expression? No, it was apparently it was something he said in I relation was... to that character offset. And people are like, that's cool and makes sense. It does not. It doesn't though, does it? Does not it even, on any level. Does it really apply to that character? No. Because he doesn't feel like, like he's not really ice skating uphill. He has the powers of a god at that point. Yeah, he's doing you know? very well. He's doing very well for yeah. himself. I think it's also probably something that maybe a member of his entourage said and he stole it. <laughs> okay, right, yeah. Mm. So that guy's just still seething 20 yeah, years Yeah, absolutely, yeah. He ratted him out for tax evasion. That's right. Yeah. The other one is when the police shoot Blade in the hospital and he says that. I'm, I'm butchering these. But don't worry, in the video, they'll edit, Ben will edit in the real, the real dialogue. <laughs> uh, you know, that motherfucker, you're out your damn mind or whatever. Because uh -huh. he breaks out of that because a lot of the movie is just like, I'm blade and I'm serious and I'm talking through my teeth with a slight lift because I've got mm -hmm. the, the, the teeth in. And the other one is where Whistler hands in the torch, the UV torch. Uh -huh. And he's like, it's still heavy. And he's like, but you're so the big. big. Yeah. <laughs> It's great stuff. It is a good movie. It's, a good, it's, it's held up. For the most part, it is held up. The blood effects certainly haven't held up. Uh, a lot of the CGI hasn't held up. I know we mentioned it earlier. Yeah. Most most of that finale where we've got vampire demon skeletons coming out of people's bodies oh and atrocious. <laughs> when Deacon Frost turns into that blood god and his hand sort of regen yeah. regenerates into He's the cut in half and then he yeah. switches back together. That's an alternate ending though because they reshot it. I don't I've know if you've it. seen it. But the actual ending they shot is he just turns into a big blood tornado. Okay. And Deacon Frost kind of, he, you know, whips Blade around the room and Blade's like, I can't even deal with this blood tornado. And then at one point, it's still rough, but Deacon Frost's like head and shoulders come out of the top and he's like, hey, Blade, it's me. You mean the, the anti dandruff shampoo? That's what I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got great 90s hair, doesn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah. Upon test screening that, people were like, there's a big disconnect between this character that we enjoyed and then he's just a big swirling blood tornado. Yeah, how about we have them fight Kung Fu style? Yeah. Mm. But a lot of that Kung Fu style bit at the end is just it seems to be them just clacking swords diagonally yes. if you but notice I, yeah, that well, I, I agree but at the same time I think because that was the limitations of the genre again uh, at the time because that, again that was pre The Matrix sure that it was just the a lot, post The Crow post The Crow exactly yeah. so it was just a lot of swords clacking but I think they fixed it. I think the editing yes. conceals that as best they can yeah. at the time. Like, it looks dangerous, again, even though it's just, okay, clack them together for five minutes and we'll <laughs> just put something, put something together that works. Did you enjoy the, the spin kicks hitting nobody? Yes, all oh, the two together. <laughs> okay. And here we have the clip, a blade and a henchman spin kicking the air. <laughs> You could loop that endlessly. Yes, that's right. <laughs> There's probably a 10 hours clip on Oh, there almost YouTube, certainly yeah. is, yeah. But I think that there are some special effects that are good. The bit where they put that uh, European vampire in the sun. Yep. And mm -hmm. he kind of sizzles away and it's kind of Raiders of the Lost Ark-esque where yes. his body's just kind of tearing apart from, uh -huh. the, from the sunlight. Mm -hmm. That's probably it in terms of special effects. <laughs> I like the uh, the the serum that bubbled up the the vampire. Actually, like that, yeah, you're I right. think that's a good effect. That feels practical. Some of those bubbly yeah. people. I wonder whether they made them practically, yeah. and then kind of imposed them into the shot. Yeah, or just put them in a decompression chamber. Yeah, that might have been it as well. Mm -hmm. Get some extras, doesn't matter, mate. Yeah. yeah, you do it for the credit and the love of the craft. Absolutely, that's what you tell them. yeah, yeah. The movie, the craft. That's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. probably this year, I'd imagine. <laughs> Almost certainly. <laughs> yeah, uh, and there's also the puppetry of that giant slovenly vampire. That, I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a practical effect, but you know, there's that was good a, choice of words. Slovenly. It's a slovenly vampire. Very slovenly. It? Apparently, the story behind that guy is he's just eating babies. So he's just got to that point where it's beyond what, blood. What is this? What, what is this there's original script? There's a lot of <laughs> babies being eaten and shot with silver bullets. What's happening? <laughs> there certainly is. Was this a reworked script that was just called Blade Baby Shooter? <laughs> it may it may work very well have been. You know what surprised me? There's a scene that showed a lot of the restraint. It's after Whistler dies and Blade is suiting up and uh -huh. he's clicking in his silver bullets. And it's just mostly silent with some kind of low hum ominous music. But I feel like you could have easily have just had that go. But it's not. And I mean, it, it becomes that. Oh, sure. When, yeah. he, when he gets to the to the lobby, uh -huh. like the Matrix. 
or maybe even the bit where he dodges the bullets. Like, like the, the Matrix. Matrix. I enjoyed the bit where Blade tears out a vampire's throat and throws it at another guy. <laughs> it's pretty good, yeah. That's a good <laughs> that's a good scene, sure. I loved the I loved it when the vampires could uh, survive in daylight just by putting on a lot of sunscreen. You'd really want to zink that scalp. Oh, you know yeah, what you I mean? Get that, you get, get that right in there, there, you know. Yeah. Or a lot of gel. I guess. Oh, gel would probably. It was the nineties. It was the nineties. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Fudge was that the nineties? They probably put some fudge in. Yeah. <laughs> SPF thirty fudge. I liked that uh, sunscreen element because you'd give that a go, wouldn't you? You'd give it a go. I mean, it'd probably still get your eyes, but yeah, you know, mm-hmm. you make it work, don't you? Yeah. Put yeah. some fudge in your eyes. Yeah, put some fudge in your eyes. Mm-hmm. There was actually a Stan Lee cameo that was cut in this. You know, the cops that run in to find yeah. some pigtails on fire mm-hmm. on the wall. Yeah. One of them was supposed to be Stan Lee, but they just went, nobody knows Stan Lee. <laughs> nobody could imagine Stan Lee. <laughs> Even if you knew him, nobody could imagine Stan Lee running into any any location. So. This isn't mall rats. Exactly. That's right. This is post mall rats. This is serious business. <laughs> this is post mall rats days. Yeah. I think it wraps up well and it sets up a sequel that they probably were very unsure that they were going to have without leaning too heavily into it. There is an alternate ending and you can find this where Blade goes outside and he's and he's with his lady friend whose name I've already forgotten, mm-hmm. the scientist who cures being a vampire. You'd think the vampires would at least look into that, wouldn't you? It'd be I mean, I know they probably don't want to be cured, uh-huh. but it's kind of it's knowledge you'd want. Say you've got an enemy that you, you could turn to a human and then you could use them as a blood bag or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. all I'm saying. But they're like vamp or if you want to or if you want to go on like a seaside holiday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you don't want to you don't want to fudge you. Don't want to zinc up. Yeah. 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 Then you then you can just become a human for a bit. <laughs> go on and have a lovely holiday, then just get bitten by a vampire again, turn into a vampire. Come back be vampire. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I can appreciate that. They kind of really speed over that vampire cure. The, curing a vampire is impossible. Well, I did in like six hours. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's pretty good. Can you make me a new serum? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I probably can. Probably sh- I probably should have got in, got in contact with you years ago, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's nice that happenstance has brought us here together, but yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, there isn't anything where Blade goes outside and is like, there's more danger and there's more things to do. And the lady, whose name I've forgotten, mm-hmm. is like, what about that guy? And you look in the distance and there's a man in a trench coat with long hair standing on a building and Blade's like, he gets ready for action. That's supposed to be Michael Morbius. Oh. Which they're making a solo film of with Jared Leto, Leto, mm. at this very moment. Leto himself. Right. But they realised that uh, they don't own the rights to that character because Spider-Man was at Sony and yeah, still right. is. So mm-hmm. they couldn't just put in Michael Morbius. But also they could have just put him in and be like, who's that? Some, <laughs> some, some other guy. Just some guy. Because yeah. they don't say, that's Michael Morbius. You know, from the comic books, <laughs> none of you are reading. That's why Marvel's going out of business. There's also a deleted scene where Deacon Frost uh, opens the freezer in his apartment. Just... And there's dead babies? No, you're close. Oh, what a twist. Do you know who his idea is? He's going to uh, he's gonna release the blood tornado and infect everybody in the world and turn mm-hmm. them into a vampire. That and... was also an alternate ending. Yeah, right. Where then it would end with Blade and his lady friend traveling the world fighting vampires. Huh. But then if you turn every, everyone into a vampire... Well, how do you feed? How do you feed? Mm-hmm. So he's just got people hanging in giant plastic bags in his freezer and he's like, yeah, I just keep people in here and I just drink their blood. Like, this is a test, but we're going to do this the world over. It's going to be great. People are going to love it. So that was the idea. That's if you were thinking this plan makes no sense. Mm, I was, and continue to do so, <laughs> yes. i got a last little fact here. Steve Norrington, the director. Yes. He didn't direct That's enough. a name I recognised when I saw it in the, in, the, in the credits, but I didn't know what he was from. You'll know in oh, a second. Okay. He didn't do either of the sequels, uh-huh. but the last film he did direct, and this makes a lot of sense, is League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, yep, okay. Do you understand yep. now? Yep, S- <laughs> Stephen Norrington's League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah, I get it now. That's interesting because, again, Blade, mm. having rewatched it in the year of our law, 2019, mm. still a pretty solid film. Yeah. I'm willing to bet that if we rewatched League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, it would not hold up at this point. I so, 100% so agree So how, how did a man fall so far Yeah, is the good, is a question, right? Hubris, thy name be... Steve Norrington, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. But there uh-huh. you go. Yeah. What I did like in the credits, we had Blade created by Marv Wolfman and Gene Colan. I'm like, that's a nice little touch because that often didn't happen. Yeah. I just looked into it. Apparently, that's because Marv Wolfman sued New Line for $35 million. <laughs> <laughs> and then rather than giving him the money, they're like, uh, let's give you a created by credit. Brilliant. Mm. And didn't he not get it on the second one either or something? Uh, that is correct, yes. Great. Mm-hmm. Good work, or the TV everybody. show, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the TV show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So we're getting the new Blade. Are you excited for it? So excited. Yeah. Because, I mean, first of all, reintroduction of Blade, yeah. but also introduction of vampires into the larger Marvel universe. That's what it. kind of vampires are they going to be? They're going to be this kind of vampire? They're going to be a weird magic vampire that turns into a bat and a wolf and, and, and whatever, got hypnosis powers. You want Stephen Dorff, 90s vampire, you want him back? Yes. Sunscreen him up, gel in the hair, well, in the hair. I feel like that's the essence of a vampire. You know how they say like certain men, like their fashion stops in the best year of their life? And if you're a vampire bitten in the 90s... 
leather blazer fudge in oh the hand. Oh my hair. goodness. Yeah, that's right, yeah. What an era. Mm. People thought uh, maybe Wesley Snipes wouldn't be happy with this situation because he's talked about wanting to return to the character of Blade, but he recently put up a social media post where he's like, it's a new era, man. Good on him. Yeah, Let him get out there. So there you go. He's got the blessing of Blade himself. Do you think he's going to get a cameo in the movie? That's a good maybe question. Maybe a Whistler. Could be, could be the Whistler could be a Whistler, character. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. But that'd be an Abigail Whistler. Oh, from Blade 3. Daughter of. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Famous anti vaxxer, Abigail Whistler. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's save that for Blade 3. <laughs> All right, this has been Care About a Garbage. Uh, we do this every Tuesday. You got something you want us to look at? We'll bloody look at it. Comic, movie, video game, Blade sequel. If it's Blade 2 or 3, don't even bother because we'll get to it. <laughs> don't even worry. Don't don't waste your time and hours. We're going to get to them, all right? I would love, though, to hear people's thoughts on this movie. How do you think it holds up? It's yeah. one of those things where, like I said, yeah, it's dated, but it's not bad. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm, so there's, there's way there's way more good than bad in this movie. Yeah, so. I don't disagree. And of course, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We do that every Monday morning. You want to know the bloody movie news of the week? We we cover most of it, probably. Some of it. We're across it. <laughs> Some of it. <laughs> I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Thanks for stopping on by. Go grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.